welcome Usher. Thank you very much. How are you guys? Hello. Wonderful. Can you hear me now? Okay. Hi. Well, um, hello. Uh, this is not my first press conference, but this is definitely my first time uh, here in Morocco. Uh, very happy to uh, have experienced your incredible uh, country. Uh, as well as the arts and uh, incredible scenery here. Really looking forward to an incredible festival. Um, I participated in the last two days of the festival, uh, seeing Akon as well as Sting. And uh, what an incredible uh, stage to be set. And um, really looking forward to, to sharing my music. Uh, this will be a really exciting performance for me because it's my first time performing in Morocco. Welcome to Morocco. Hello. Hello. Okay. We were told that you're, uh, you, you're, you're very much into art, contemporary art, and Moroccan contemporary art. Particularly. Yes. <laughs> you love work with this artist, Hassan Fijaj. What attracted your attention to his work? Second question. We were told that you were yesterday at the museum. Yes. You, you bought everything in the gallery. Why well, didn't buy everything? <laughs> Do you confirm? No, I can't confirm buying everything. But I did see some really incredible uh, art and also had an opportunity to go through the city and see some of the uh, incredible street artists from France, from Germany, uh, from Morocco. Uh, really great uh, to see art displayed in the way it's intended for it to be a universal language that echoes uh, the reality of um, policy, the idea of uh, the reality of uh, circumstance in these different countries. Uh, the one thing that attracted me to Hassan Hajij's work, um, I mean, is a is a conversation I think that you know is is worldwide and. Um, but the conversation is somewhat muted. Um, uh, the women and the way that they're depicted in his, in his pieces uh, kind of represent a culture, uh, but are also uh, an active uh, movement, uh, a new idea uh, about um, the way women are viewed, uh, treated, and, uh, and celebrated. And in those pieces, um, I mean, I think it's true Moroccan, uh, in culture, uh, but then also too the color, the vibrant colors, uh, which the pieces that I own are primarily black and white. However, the frames are made of wood, and uh, there's normally a specific um, uh, article that kind of flanks the entire piece. But I own four pieces, and I'm looking to own more. I've become really good friends with he. Uh, and hopefully his daughter uh, is going to uh, see me perform in London um, when I'm there performing for something with MasterCard. Uh, but he uh, is, a, is a great representation of what I, I've noticed uh, from uh, Moroccan artists. Uh, there are other artists that I was able to uh, observe as well as purchase. Um, uh, Mustafa Akarim uh, is another artist that I was, I'm, I'm very, very pleased with his work. You will be uh, releasing your new album, you are, uh, yes. later this year, we're waiting for it. Yes. Uh, can you tell us a bit how you want to make your music evolve? And about featurings, will there be like Chris Brown, Drake, and maybe a surprise like Rihanna? Yeah, um, that would be a surprise, yeah? <laughs> I guess your guess is good as mine. Um, every incredible album, and, and if you don't mind, I'm going to speak in Usher. You guys have been speaking in French, and oh, okay, anyway. It's going to be awesome. And um, the last year uh, of my life um, has been, really been dedicated in um, telling the story of the last really three to four years of my life, all in the music that I'm, I'm, um, I'm singing and performing. Uh, in terms of features, I can't tell you right now exactly who the features will be, but the body of work, uh, this will be my eighth studio album 
um, as I've been able to travel the world, see people, have experiences, you know, my music is somewhat of a diary. It gives me an opportunity to, uh, to voice uh, some of the emotional things that I've had to deal with, some very hard times, uh, some great times, some fun times. Uh, as I'm, you know, getting a little older, I'm now 29. I'm not. But um, in my 30th year, which I'm not, I'm really enjoying it. Um, <laughs> but th this album will definitely be something for all of my fans to appreciate. And tonight's show will be uh, similar. Uh, it's a collective of all of the different genres and music and experience. Rather, you've been a fan since the earlier days of my career or some of the more recent um, uh, years. Hey. Uh, but what we heard before you come, we have been hearing a lot of good things about you, especially uh, the fact that you're humble about, about everything you do in life. You know, it just confirms itself the way you're talking to you. It's beautiful. Here. Uh, I, I, my question is, since you have seen the world and met a lot of cultures, and you say it's a different experience each time, how does that affect your view of the world and also the way you create music? Well, I want to answer the first part of your question, which is, um, you know, uh, to whom much is given, I guess much is required. Um, you know, part of um, being a human being, who <laughs> which you, as though you don't know what it's to be, what it's like to be a human being. No, but uh, part of being human is having uh, the need to understand, to to grow, uh, to gain knowledge of the history of your past. Uh, in the reality of your current um, space. Uh, for me, you know, I really uh, enjoy uh, art because it's the greatest preserver of life and culture. Um, part of uh, what drives me as an artist to write the songs that I do and uh, have the conversation that I have is my expression as an artist. Uh, though some of it is artistic at times and there may be a tie into a specific artist or working with specific people to help to uh, articulate my vision and tie the emotion and the uh, the creativity together I try to create a story that's significant to the entire world through my music um, music should bring us together for every incredible experience that you've had in life there's a musical experience or a song that goes with it so I try to assist in um, um, in gathering as much as I possibly can and then putting it in the music uh, as I travel, you know. Um, you know if, I, if I just stayed the, if I stayed the same way, that means I haven't traveled and that means I haven't been influenced by what I've seen. Um, but all of that, you know, uh, in humility uh, is really in respect and in and, and honor uh, of, of understanding, of educating so that I can teach my kids so that I can talk about it and make it available for people who uh, admire my curation, uh, what I see. I use my, uh, my Instagram and you know, my Facebook account as an opportunity to um, just give people a light, uh, an opportunity to see what's going on in my world. Hey, I'm Eve Yasmin from Northeast Hello, Eve. How are you? Nice. 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 Yeah. nice to meet you. Nice. Um, a lot of people in Morocco sell roses on the street, and I'm sure you've seen it. So I want to give you a little one as a present. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're welcome. Right, I've got so many questions I'd like to ask. I know we're limited to time. Um, I'm also a singer, huge fan, love your music. Um, first question I want to start with is I saw that little clip of you dancing to Ganawa music in the street and you're doing some dance moves and stuff. Would you ever consider having some Moroccan dancers in your music videos? Um, Moroccan dancers specifically? Yeah. Um, well, I haven't had the chance to uh, to see uh, all of the Moroccan dances. I've, there were a few uh, street performers that I was able to, you know, just have a, a candid moment with the other day uh, in the Medina. Uh, they were playing music and they were sharing their culture with me, so I gave them a little bit of mine. <laughs> There's a dance called the Whip that I wanted to I wanted to have them do to their music, which is. You know, yeah. But um, yeah, I'm I'm always 
game. I'm always open, as I said. You know, for me, it's a cultural ex exchange. While, you know, I am who I am, and I kind of offer what I offer as an entertainer, as a person, I'm always collecting, always open, always looking to um, bring things that I think are, are magnificent to a, to a huge stage. Um, if there were an opportunity to have Moroccan dancers on stage with me, I would. Um, and maybe you never know what could happen tonight. You know, I've learned some. I've learned a few new moves, Moroccan moves. Um, so I might, I might, I might open up a few little things. Yeah. One last question. I need a. I need a woman. Here we go. We started with all men. Oh. Here we go. Another man took the mic. Yeah. We have. Okay. Bonjour. Aida. <laughs> you have to give it to Aida. You guys can ask together if you want. Hi. Since I can remember, you've been in the industry since the 90s. I still have all your albums in my iPod. I listen to it like every day, just before I came again and again. And I wanted to know, like, how? What do you think about the evolution of the industry of hip hop and R&B these days? The evolution of hip hop and R&B industry. The industry, uh, total. Um, well, in comparison to the ninety, in, in, in comparison to the nineties, things have obviously changed, evolved for the good, and then some. Um, you know, maybe maybe less um, of the authentic experience. I think the live experience has been slowly but surely taken out of um, R&B. Where R and B was originally developed, mostly with instruments in hand, uh, or at a piano, be it you know a crooner, or either a performer, and being the showman is, you know, kind of the most important part for me as an entertainer because it speaks to the authenticity of what it is to be an R and B artist. Um, I'm proud, as I said, of the evolution and the fact that. Everybody can participate in it, but what I try to do is just, um, I, I do my best to um, keep entertainment in the forefront to make sure that the uh, live experience and entertainment is a part of it. Um, so that up and coming artists understand that that development is equally as important as the uh, kind of careless nature of, you know, just expressing what you feel. You know, part of uh, music is expression based off of where you are, what region you come from, and how you uh, exert, what energy you exert into it. And it is rhythmically driven. You know, as I'm, I'm in a restaurant the other day and I'm listening to the guitars and the drums, I realize, wow, it, it, it is, it, it's just, it's a rhythm. It's a, it's kind of like a tribal thing that's kind of moving you. Um, you know, that aspect to R&B uh, is why you're going to see the show that I'm going to put on tonight. Why I've brought my live band, why I brought my dancers, and we're going to share what we have to offer and what we've picked up throughout all of these years, through all of these incredible records that you've been playing, and we're going to celebrate with you. And um, we're going to have an amazing show tonight. Are you guys ready for it? Yeah, yeah it's, it's definitely going to be a night to remember, and I'm really looking forward to it. You did? Yeah. Well, we've been celebrating birthdays, you know, uh, having a great time. It's been very positive. And uh, I'm really enjoying my stay here, and I'm really, really excited to perform for you guys tonight. Thank you so much.